This video is working in crayon number three, and what I'm going to be doing is um, drawing in crayon on these two examples that I made in working in crayon two. This is newsprint paper with brown sepia ink as a basic outline, and this is copy paper with blue legal lapis ink by Noodlers in a basic outline. Now I have um, Crayola crayons and I have um, the 64 count box of Crayolas and I have my own beeswax crayons. Now what I want to show you is um, I'm just going to basically fill the crayon in. I mean fill the pair in and um, I'm going to go ahead and work. Now I've picked out a few colors. I want to make sure the camera doesn't fall over. Um, and I'll show you what they are. I start out with some basic colors. For yellows, I have yellow and dandelion. For greens, I have um, green. green yellow and yellow green I have burnt orange wild strawberry I have sky blue and I have two purples um, there's actually three there's one that's called plum and plum is a wonderful color and it's one that lays down almost on any surface. So I actually will have three violets. This is plum. And it, it's a very soft color that goes down very easily. There is also violet and blue violet. So those are the colors I am starting with. Now I can give you um, a basic formula in a sense of what I do. What I first do is take my lighter yellow, which in, in this case is yellow, and go over the background. Now the advantage to newsprint is the way that the paper itself grabs the color. And for some reason my table is shaking a little bit. But what I'm going to do is put the background in um, as well as the table underneath the pair, which right now I only have two lines there. But that gives the idea of the pair sitting on a table. Now I think that shows up. That's the palest color. That's the yellow. I move in all directions. especially for the first few layers. So, um, I can make it wider. Now in this case, I'm also going to put yellow where I'll have the table, and I'll wait to put any yellow on the pair. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add colors, and I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing and like I said, this is on the newsprint. Um, knowing that the pear is going to get be green, what I want around it are local are um, complementary colors. So the opposite of green is red. And if you don't have a basic color wheel, they are available online to just use as reference, or you can buy one. But this under layer of red is going to make that green of the pear show up better. Now if this had been in with a black outline on the pair, 
then it will feel much more like a coloring book. But with the brown, um, especially when I've done my watercolor painting, it's much more like I'm painting instead of coloring. So it's really just using a wax stick um, to get the effects that you want. This is a blue-green, and this is where layering comes in, because green and red, I think it's blue-green, it's plain green. Green and red together make brown. So that's the first example of layering color. In other words, you let the transparent layers build the color instead of directly using a brown crayon. You can use brown, but it makes it much more uh, graphic looking and plain looking, whereas using layered color will give you um, depth. Now this paper is acting just a little bit different from the coloring book paper that I was using earlier in the earlier video. Usually in fine art, the light source in any drawing, you have an imaginary light source and it usually comes from the left. So the left side of the pair and the background behind it would be slightly lighter than the right. And you'll notice I haven't put in the shadow yet. That would be the pair um, reflecting on the wall behind it. Now I have an idea of where my colors are going to be and how I'm going to set them up. So now I can go and um, put a very, the lighter yellow in where the pear is. When you're working with wax crayons, they actually, um, as they warm up, they work a little better.
Okay, now I'm going to put um, a little bit of darks in um, because this paper, being newsprint, I'm not sure how much layering it's going to allow me to do. So I want to get my main shapes down before I lose the surface of the paper. I really need a blue that will go down um, more easily than that one is. So here's cornflower. Now what I'm going to do is use a red that I made as a beeswax crayon. It's like a cadmium red. And I'm going to go over the background. Now this may or may not come out looking like fine art because after it all it is newsprint paper um, but these this is the procedure for um, layering wax color when you're going around um, on the shadow area and doing the background you go right over the shadow so that it doesn't look as um, distinct and as far forward as the pear itself. Now I've got lots of um, red and green going on, but I'm not sure I like the way that looks. So I want to bring in more blue and I'm going to use another um, one of my beeswax crayons. It's really hard to kind of do this even with a camera on and um, I don't know maybe other artists are different. I, I don't think I could ever be like a street artist. We have a lot of them here on the Cape and it's very difficult to just uh, kind of lose yourself in what you're doing and yet um, have to be polite or talk to people. Now here's another um, beeswax color that is a medium brown and that's going to go over the table area and to bring some light into the table area I like to use orange instead of yellow or white it's just a different way of um, bringing out color regular Crayola orange and I'll use that to go over the table area in the opposite direction now even though it doesn't look like each layer is showing up brightly as itself what it's doing is combining with the other colors
So now, um, trying to think which way I want the background to go. Let me put some more green in the pear. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual and I'm going to use white as kind of a blender for the background and depending on what colors you have down you want to make sure it's clean before you do it. I want to be able to just ignore the background in a lot of ways, but with it also adding a dimension to the drawing. It's very annoying that my table is shaking. Let me see if I can hold it still. So now the, the table area and the background are kind of there. They're there. So now the focus is on the actual pair. And you can see, I mean, how many, that's not very many layers. And I'm almost at the point now where I'm about to lose the surface of the paper. So now I have to focus um, directly on the pair. If this were outlined in black, it would look like I couldn't stay within the lines. But by using the brown, it gives it a more artistic look. Now I'm going to use orange again and go over areas of the pear. Now th um, this is where I am now with just using the orange to going over the areas of the pear. And, um, because orange is the background color and is in the, the table area here, then it should be on the pair. Because each of the surfaces reflect off of each other. So there should be a little bit of each um, main color in each item. Which means you could, uh, like right now, I can make the shadow more green. And it would just bring the pair forward a little bit more green and orange I could add in this blue but this is the bright blue that I make um, that is a beeswax crayon and I want to use some of this if I can get the camera to stand up there we go Sorry. Um, I think 
that will hold it. Now even though that brown outline is there, when you look at this, you don't really notice it. I mean, it's there, it's part of the drawing, it's obvious and visible. Now, I more or less have to stop because I am losing the surface of the wax where this red crayon is actually pushing wax away. So this isn't um, maybe the best one I've ever done, <clears throat> but you know, it's, it's a pair. Now, I'm not sure that I would work on newsprint all the time. This is almost, it feels like it would be good for pastels. It would probably be wonderful for kids drawing um, with crayons. Um, it took the ink okay. It didn't um, bleed too much into the paper. It's still a good drawing. Um, I don't know that I'd use that all the time. <clears throat> So now let's do something similar on the copy paper. I can get the camera to be a little bit more cooperative. Now this is a whole different thing because I've got blue on white. Everything is going to show up differently. And immediately this copy, regular uh, printer copy paper has a much easier effect with the crayon. The blue outline is going to give it a more graphic look no matter what I do to it. kind of the same colors. If this were a fine art paper, there would be a greater drag on the crayon, and I would be getting wider strips of color than I am on this.
And the shadow would technically have a little bit of all of the colors that I'm using. Now I tend not to shape the tips, but you can take a knife and make um, any kind of a crayon a, a flatter stick if you want to. When you move from left to right on your main subject, it will subconsciously bring your eye or the viewer's eye from left to right so that you don't just end up with a half circle and a circle on top of each other um, in the middle. Now this is similar to the newsprint where the Crayola crayons are going down very, very lightly. Um, which is good if you're after a completely transparent effect. But not good if you're trying to just work quickly and, and get the item down on the paper. Now I'm going to grab um, the plum again. It's good to brush these little things off. Um, you can get specks from different colors and it's good to brush them off as you're working. I think the camera cut out there for a second. I was saying the beeswax crayons go down very nicely on the coffee paper. Now I'll probably look at this after I end this video and say, gee, I would have put that color there or this color there. But I just wanted to show you um, just the process of layering color. And I'm going to switch to um, beeswax crayons on the pair. I would say if you're going to color on a regular basis that you should probably um, invest in Strathmore drawing paper or Aquabee sketch pads because even though these are okay, 
they're good for practice. Um, I think I would get a little frustrated if I was working on this all the time. I'm extremely frustrated with my camera and my table. It's been one of those days today. Now this with the blue, I think the blue is um, for my own use. I think the blue outline in ink is a little bit too strong. And I actually don't like this paper for this because the wax is moving all over the place as I'm doing this. Which is kind of a new thing. So I'm getting um, nice layers of color. They're just not staying where I want them to stay. So I'm not even sure I'm going to finish this because um, right now it's kind of an exercise in frustration. But again, it's a pair. And um, so those are two types of paper. Newsprint on the right is copy paper and on the left is newsprint. And you can tell that the one on the newsprint looks a little bit better, a little softer looking than this. Um, you could almost, if you use a blue outline like that, um, of course a blue outline would work fine if I were looking at this as a coloring book page. But um, another idea is to use a blue outline like that and then just do the entire pair in blue with a very uh, couple of, uh, just a few blue lines on the bottom to show that it's actually got a plane of existence and leave the background blank. So there is, um, you can't even tell that there are actually layers of color on that. And like I said, they did not stay where I wanted them to stay. There is some transparency, but um, nothing like what I get on art paper. It's a good practice paper, I guess. Um, but that's that's all I would use copy paper for, and in fact, if I needed practice paper, I'd probably use this. Because part of the layering is not to go too far unless you're using uh, the crayons like the Stockmar crayons, crayons that um, were in working with crayon video um, one, I think. So there's just some two quick crayon drawings using Crayolas and my own beeswax crayons. Okay, now um, I'm going to do the same thing on good drawing paper. This is Strathmore 400 drawing paper. It has a brown cover and um, Crayon does very well on this. Now I'm going to use pencil and move a little bit away from the coloring book idea. This is a uh, number one extra soft pencil. And I think you can see that very lightly drawn in pencil. And it's basically going to be the same thing, the same process. But this paper is going to be 100% different for the way that wax will layer.
Now I'm going to bring in um, goldenrod for the background. It's a slightly darker um, brownish yellow, similar to yellow ochre. I was saying you want to be careful of especially blue or black little dots. You want to get them out of the way um, to make sure that you don't smudge things. Now, again, this is fast, and I'm going to come back and work on this tomorrow.
but I think right here you can see how the color is actually layering better than it did on the other two examples that it almost look you know it looks transparent <clears throat> and when I come back to this tomorrow this surface the amount that's on there now will have hardened to the touch just a little bit and um, the next layer I add on will go on um, much more easily so there are three papers for um, working with crayon not the best examples of all the possibilities of crayon but just a process of um, using opposite or complementary colors and um, in fact um, one other they're they're kind of related to crayons but they're not really are oil pastels and um, where crayons are wax and pigment oil pastels are wax and pigment and oil um, but they're not transparent you can make transparent washes with them but they don't work with the same properties but uh, for example if you want to do expressionist type completely um, complementary color type work then this would could be much brighter orange it would make the green really pop out you can experiment like that with layering it just uh, obviously takes a little bit longer to build it up than it would with oil pastels